Thank you very much, Jia Chang, for telling us your story and also for inspiring um, quotation to actually let us think. We all need to take the steps. Um, I'd like to welcome Han Bicheng. Mr. Han is the founder and CEO of Brain Co and Brain Robotics. He adopted the brain machine interface technology to help children with attention deficit, um, like ADHD and autism in getting early intervention to restore social functions. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I'm uh, very happy to be invited here to join this dialogue. My name is Han Bicheng, and I'm the founder and CEO of BrainCo. Well, what we are working on is the underlying technology for brain-computer interface. And today, I want to share with you what we're doing and how we understand the 2030 Sustainability Goal. And first of all, let's talk about to what BMI is. If artificial intelligence is about making machines smarter, then BMI is actually about connecting the human brain to machines through technology, so allowing people to do more. Well, when I was doing my PhD, I was exposed to a lot of new ideas, for instance, brain-controlled auto-driving and etc. But these technologies have not been directly applied in real life. And then I met someone special. He's an MIT undergraduate. He accidentally blew up his right hand because of a lab experiment that went wrong. He was optimistic. And he also is crazy about robotic programming. So back then he was doing apprentice in our lab, in our team. So about five years ago, we made a very basic smart processes for him. And he loved it. And he moved around every day with this simple processes, showing it to other people. And from him, I understood that actually processes, they are very expensive back then. A regular simple one may, call, may, may cost you uh, 400 to 500,000 RMB. And then we realized that there are about 85 million in China who suffer disabilities. 30 million of them suffer limb disabilities. Well, only less than 1% of the population can afford processes. This is all because the device can be very expensive. And that is why we then established Brinko, and is founded by scientists of Harvard University. And here is our goals. We hope we could lower the price to one tenth, uh, well, greatly enhance the efficacies. Here is a video. This is a, a physically disability person coming from Jiang. Jinghua, Zhejiang province. He's wearing our processes and he's doing calligraphy, Chinese calligraphy online. Well, we were quite encouraged by that, so we decided that we should continue our journey. And then we try to go extreme and perfect our algorithm. And so here's the result. We ended up having a process that uh, is enabled to upgrade itself based on the feedback it gets from the uh, EMG messages. There's, uh, the girl is uh, performing with Lang Lang, the pianist. Uh, we also have our uh, branches in Boston, in Hangzhou, and in Shenzhen we want to help more disabled people to live a normal life and to do things they used to be able to do. So, our product is also rated as one of the best inventions of times.
Of 2019, by times, we'd like to thank all the volunteers and all the participants of this program. They made us understand that um, how powerful human brains can be. PMI is actually a broad concept. We could use this technology to pass to analyze the details the thoughts in your brain. But I believe many of you may suffer insomnia or sleep problems, and 40% of Chinese over 80 years old, they have varying degrees of insomnia and uh, uh, dementia. Well, uh, uh, lots of them with stroke issues, they may also need to rehabilitate. So we could all, we could use BMI to solve these problems. And we also have our own autism center in China to try to provide innovative solutions for children with autism. And we hope that by using this technology, we could help the less fortunate to go back to their normal life and to leave no one behind. Under the guidance of China Disabled Persons Federation and the China Federation for Disabled Persons, this year we will help 3,000 people equip uh, prosthetic limbs so as to contribute to the SDGs 2030. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Han. Um, thank you for all the three speakers just now who have shared with us their stories. Although they are from different industries, having different target uh, clients and uh, different uh, companies, but they have a common concern. They're doing something for a big cause to help the planet and to help the people. So actually, this kind of examples are many, many. And in order to have more young entrepreneurs sharing and learning through this process, prior to the dialogue, UN Office for South-South Cooperation jointly with Tengxin Group launched the China. We have received over 400 50 submissions, and after three rounds of evaluations, three exceptional young entrepreneurs were selected to join us today to share their initiatives. First, let me introduce Mr. Wei Lu Zhou. Lu Zhou is a 24-year-old young agribusiness entrepreneur from Nanning City, Guangxi Province. His initiative is focused on peanut oil processing and sustainable recycling. So, Mr. Liu, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, Mr. Wei, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Hello, I'm very glad to be part of this online dialogue. And today, I want to talk about the recycling of peanut meal. A brief word, uh, uh, just a, first of all, just a brief introduction. My name is Liu Wei Zhou. I'm 24 years old, and I'm a next-gen farmer entrepreneur from Nanning, Guangxi. The year 2020 is extraordinary with natural disasters and epidemics, bringing new existential questions for the human beings on the planet. As a member of the young generation, the strong sense of ownership made me think what I can do to advance social development. I once saw farmers discarding peanut meal as a fertilizer, and that gave me some inspirations. So I began to explore the idea and put it into an action. First, peanut processing and the end product peanut oil is produced in the upstream link. Peanut meal, the byproduct, can be used in various agricultural scenarios, hence integrating production and sourcing. Local farmers, they can focus on the upstream work, oil extraction, while producers, they can focus on buying farmers' excess peanut meal. Secondly, 
raise market awareness so that more people are aware of these agricultural byproducts that can be recycled. Well, our products, our project can be divided into three categories, plant-based, animal and human. Plant-based including using peanut meal as organic fertilizer, animal peanut meal can be used as raw material of feed protein, and through the reuse of peanut meal, we promote the sustainable development of agriculture and to work through zero hunger, no poverty, industrial innovation, and other sustainable goals. Our partners include farmers, local entrepreneurs, uh, agricultural enterprises, bio enterprises, and local government and community. Social enterprises are best friends in sourcing production and implementing sustainable development projects. The industrial chain of our ecological grain oil project is in agricultural processing. The first agenda will contribute to zero hunger. As the saying goes, eat well, work hard. On the road to poverty alleviation and revitalization in rural areas, we must strive for responsible consumption. Especially with the process of the peanut manufacturing industry, social enterprises provide employment opportunities for local farmers, and decent work and economic growth can contribute to gender equality in rural areas and help achieve equal pay for equal work, thus reducing inequality and develops together. When we do a good job of project design services to the local area at the same time, we also follow and learn from our national policies such as Sprout and Road, as well as the stepping out strategy and share in the current 5G era of sustainable development of ecological agriculture replicable model, learning intelligent and big data, organic soil management of crops, and to provide tailored measures. Let's work together in 2020. Thank you, the South South Corporation and Tencent Platform for providing this dialogue opportunity. We hope to carry out more technical, economic and trade exchanges with our agriculture partners in the developing countries and to work together to link up small holder farmers with the agricultural sector, value chains with markets to promote sustainable agricultural development for a sustainable development goal of world, zero hunger by 2030. That's all for my sharing. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Li Zhou, for your story, which is so close to the people, to the community. Um, and uh, thank you for your sharing. Now, let's invite the second presentation by Ms. Zhang Chenyang. Chen Yang. Yeah, Chen Yang. Uh, well, I would like to say a few words about your initiative too. Uh, this is called Bon Cafe Plus, which aims to promote social development with sustainable products and is focused on alternative livelihood with coffee planting in Myanmar. So Chen Yang, the floor is yours. Hello, I'm Zhang Chen Yang, really pleased to participate in the dialogue with UNOSSC. My presentation has four parts. I will introduce myself first. I'm Zhang Chen Yang, 27 years old, journalist and producer by profession. And I have traveled to nearly 30 developing countries in my previous job, where I learned the importance of sustainable development and South-South cooperation. Today, I'd like to share with you my involvement in a coffee alternative farming project in Myanmar. First, the concept of a alternative crops refers to the cultivation of other cash crops to replace the opium poppy. Right now, this stage is um, it is being promoted in Golden Triangle region, where sugarcane, bananas, mulberry trees, and coffee beans are the options. In Myanmar's Shan state, where the soil conditions alpine climate ideal for coffee cultivation. Its government, UN agencies, and NGOs are helping farmers replace poppy cultivation with Arabica coffee. As you can see on the picture in the left, this is the drug reduction, drug elimination campaign by UN in Myanmar. In 2016, I learned about the concept of alternative development coffee. We were inspired by it and we wanted to help the locals to stabilize their industrial chains. 
so they can get rid of the drug-related economy and have a better life. With an idea in mind, we quickly got into action. And in March 2019, we officially launched Bon Cafe Myanmar Alternative Coffee Development. And our engagement approach can be categorized into three modules. Sourcing is the first thing. With Myanmar farmers participating in the sourcing, together with social enterprises in Myanmar, and we could launch our own brand. The second is to connect the market and make these products known among consumers. The third is that the profits of this project will be reused for sustainable development project platforms to help social enterprises to establish a supply chain of the coffee so that in the future they can improve the brand of this alternative development coffee product. Our main partners have um, from two sources. The first is the local social enterprises in Myanmar. The second is Chinese company investing in Myanmar. To be more specific, social enterprises in Myanmar work with us because we source from them or buy from them. Secondly, we connect them with our sustainable development projects. When we buy from these social enterprises for coffee beans, they will make their business running and they can provide jobs in local communities. Especially in the industry of coffee, where you have a lot of sun drying and screening jobs, and these are quite ideal for local women. And these women workers will have the opportunity to be at work and receive trainings. This can contribute to SDG 1 no poverty and SDG 8 decent work and economic growth. Secondly, how we work with Chinese companies. Well, for those Chinese companies investing in Myanmar, they have budgets and plans for doing CSR in Myanmar. So we hope that local Chinese companies can work with us, also work with Myanmar government, UTs and other NGOs to design our project. Working together, we can establish and build factories and also to bring industrial methods from China to Myanmar to help them improve. By doing this, we can improve the product quality and also improve the productivity of Myanmar. This is in line with SDG line, industry innovation and infrastructure, as well as SDG 10 sustainable cities and communities, sustainable cities and communities. And also for Chinese companies, it's a way for them to fulfill their CSR. After we design the supply chain, we can also introduce our own products and connect to the market. For example, we have our coffee website, Bon Cafe Plus. You are welcome to visit our website and buy fresh coffee beans from this project. You can also learn knowledge about alternative development and economy in Myanmar and why we do what we do. Also, in important international events or conferences, we will introduce and pitch more people and to invite more stakeholders to participate. We did lot of promotion in batches and our products were very good received in the market. That's why we continue with follow-up plans to B and to C. To so for individual consumers through our website or our media platform, consumers can buy our products directly and also for to B. We hope more companies can work with us through their CSR programs and also to make our products replicable. To go to more countries of South South corporations or more developing countries and to share better business models and products. In January, before the outbreak of COVID-19, for better understanding of our project and also for promotion, I took a field trip to Myanmar and I came across this little girl you see in the picture. 
Without such enterprises, she probably will just be working in the fields, which will not make a lot of money and which is not stable. Right now, she works in a social enterprise, working in coffee industry. She's learning about coffee. She is having lots of new ideas. When I was interviewing her, she told me that she wanted to be a um, barista. And also, at the picture on the right, you see the cappuccino she made from before living with this beautiful heart pattern on the surface. So because of her, because of so many other cases, I am now very determined for what I do so that more girls like King and more regions like Myanmar can be connected to more resources and can benefit from more as and can contribute to SDG for a better future. So that's all for my sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chen Yang. Actually, um, I already smelled the aroma from the coffee made by King. Thank you. So uh, now let's move on to hear the story from Mr. Bai Yiqi. Yiqi is de dedicated to research and marketing of plant-based products, focusing on solutions in green industry and sustainable development. So, Ichi, the floor is yours. this is because I believe I'm a member of the Earth and I just don't want to see the Earth as damaged. And that is why I want to take care of every bit of the environment. But I understand that one person cannot change the world. And that is why I decided to connect with more people through environmental protection. In 2019, I had the honor to be nominated by the Central Committee of the Communist Youth League to join the UN Youth Climate Summit as one of the Chinese youth delegates. I share my views with the Secretary General's Youth Envoy and learned from others on how to practice sustainable development. At the International Student Conference on Environment and Sustainability, I also shared my research proposal with more than 300 young people from over 50 countries around the world. I came across the concept of plant-based diet by chunks. By reading the article titled ETA Lancet Report, I understand that food demand is a double-edged sword. People rely on it to meet their dietary needs, but given the population pressure, it is also one of the sources of serious climate issues and food security problems. So it is critical for us to have a sustainable food system. So that is why I began my research on plant-based diets and I researched the meat vegetable ratio in some Chinese university canteens and how teachers and students understand healthy diet, hence trying to test the feasibility of promoting such products. But in my conversation with Yo Logistics people, I learned that they started plant-based diet program 10 years ago, and based on that, I finally decided on the positioning and development plan for plant-based products. First of all, plant-based products refer to products that replace animal protein with plant protein, such as plant protein drinks and etc. Following the inspiration we got from traditional Chinese food culture, we plan to develop a set menu 
of side dishes and processed ingredients altogether five categories. They have zero hormones, zero cholesterol, zero trans fat, and low carbohydrates, therefore offering excellent environmental and dietary benefits, reducing carbon emissions and contributing to hunger eradication, good health and well-being. We all know that traditional uh, farming produces lots of carbon emission. And we also know that 4 million people die around the world every year because of obesity. So plant-based products in this regard uh, do have its advantages. To be specific, plant-based products, they are conducive to reducing carbon emission, hunger eradication, good health and well-being. Well, I understand that it's difficult to contribute to global sustainable development if the products are only produced, promoted in only one region. That is why I hope I could, so I hope that the concept of the community of human destiny will be put into practice and the South-South cooperation will lead to trade exchanges, technology sharing, resource matchmaking, and the promotion of sustainable development. Here, I want to emphasize two points. The first is technology sharing. Only by using technology sharing can we reduce the overall production costs and benefit more developing countries. And secondly, young people with the programs of We Media and Internet can help promote the Chinese healthy plant-based diet around the world. Young people, they are adventurous and they do not want to be bilookers. They want to join the action. So overall, we have two goals. We aim to contribute to two SDG goals, ending hunger and climate action. In terms of ending hunger, we could develop products more suitable for developing countries where regional meat security and malnutrition are still big issues. Climate-wise, we rely on healthy, tasty Chinese food to raise consumers' awareness of plant-based products to alleviate the pressure caused by traditional livestock farming. Well, cannot be changed by one, but we can influence those around us through our actions. We can work together for one goal, such as focusing on the promotion of plant-based food systems and thus contribute to the sustainable development of the planet. And here I'd like to welcome friends around the world to join more calls and to contribute to a better planet together. Walk the talk, take actions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, E.T. Uh, now, I would like to introduce UNFPA, United Nations Population Fund. UNFPA has been a very strong partner supporting and implementing South South and China. with our office since 2017 at the start of the Youth for South program on all levels. Now we have the pleasure today to welcome Ms. Zheng Haoran, the Youth Leadership Officer at the UNFPA in China, to deliver special messages after hearing all of these excellent presentations. So Haoran, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Chediak, dear guests, nice to meet you here. Uh, it is my pleasure to join the big family representing the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA. Thank you so much for the kind invitation. And I'm also really happy to see so many young entrepreneurs here today and to hear their experiences and their stories fighting for global challenges. 
And after hearing your presentation, I can see you have achieved so far. You know, what you have already achieved is not only what the problems, what I can do is far beyond. And you are exploring ways to bring more sectors into your uh, actions. And I feel your determination, which makes me more motivated and encouraged to continue our work. And I believe together we can even carry this further. Therefore, I want to applaud and celebrate your progress. And I'm sure there are more examples like this across the world for sustainable impact. I work at UNFPA, the Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency of the United Nations. We aim to expand possibilities for women and young people to lead healthy and productive lives. But there are too many people are still left behind. Reproductive health problems are a leading cause of death and disability for women in the developing world. Young people bear the highest risks of HIV infection and unintended pregnancy. There are more than 100 million girls face the prospect of child marriage and other harmful practices. Much more needs to be done, and it, it is not a one-man job. So the UNFPA Strategic Plan 2018 to 2021 identifies the partnerships and coordination, including South-South and Triangular Cooperation, as one of our core engagement towards our mission and the SDGs. All UNFPA country offices and programs are expected to broker the systematic exchange of solutions, innovations, and experiences between countries in need and those with deployable expertise. So in 2018, the United Nations Population Fund signed an interagency agreement with UNOSSC to support the Youth for South initiative. So our participation is to provide the sexual and reproductive health and rights component into the South Youth for South program. And this partnership shows a great example of the collaborative efforts of the UN system in advancing the youth agenda for achieving the SDGs through South-South and Triangular Cooperation. UNFPA is proud to support knowledge exchange, capacity building, and provide technical expertise and promote dialogues between our resources and young people, together with UNOSSC and our partners. Also at our global level, uh, our UNFPA Innovation Secretariat and our partners have been supporting many innovation projects within country offices and also cultivating global exchanges. For example, in China, we provide comprehensive sexuality education to children and adolescents in the remote areas through live streaming. So it was the first such available courses in China and also has potential to be replicated to other countries, especially developing and underdeveloping countries through South-South collaboration, because there are many, many countries like this, they don't have school-based sexuality education for young people. Also projects like YMK, which I'm so glad to see YMK, uh, YMK is here. There are many projects like YMK uh, from Africa, such as Dika in Mozambique, Semi City from Benin, Wawa Aba in Ghana, they're all very good examples of innovation for global sharing. And not need to mention the International Youth Conference in Shenzhen last year, and also the Unleash, because UNIP also provided mentorship on uh, SDG3 health. And there's some other examples, uh, such as our partnerships with uh, African countries, including Ghana, Togo, Benin, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, on the innovation project called Tech for Use, and also the knowledge exchange platform called Use for Use Forum in Ghana. We built the bridge for Chinese young people and their African sisters and brothers. So, but no matter what we do and how we proceed, young people belong at the center of our collective efforts. As UNFPA Executive Director, Dr. Natalia Kanem says, None of our ambitious global goals can be achieved without the meaningful participation of young people. So today, we saw the potential of what innovation and youth entrepreneurship can do to our future, especially under the COVID pandemic, when the world faces so many uncertainties, such as children are not able to return to school in some countries, climate change, public crisis, and also how can we lead to the new normal. 
As Jayasama and Mr. Chediak said in the video, our work to achieve to a better future for everyone, everywhere through the 2030 Agenda and the South-South Cooperation is more relevant than ever. And thank you so much uh, for RCO China and Tencent to organize this Youth Dialogue series. And thank you for UNOSSE uh, for this amazing opportunity. We are able to hear voices and actions from China, Ghana, and all over the world. So now, through innovation and youth entrepreneurship, we are more confident to break the global challenges we face and accelerate the journey to achieve the SDGs and leaving, leave, leaving no one behind. Again, thank you so much, and I look forward to more discussions. Thank you, Haran. It's a pleasure to work with UNFPA and all the other partners. Indeed, we can't do it alone. Now we can move on to the question and answers and live discussion. Uh, well, we have very limited time left, uh, although the participation are very active, but let's just take a couple of questions. Uh, I hope we can. Sario, you have been using social media to promote social enterprise, benefiting other young people. How would you advise policymakers today on engaging young people in advancing SDGs through social media platforms? How would government provide motivation to young people to establish their own social enterprises? Another question is to Mr. Yuan Huohong. As a young entrepreneur while starting out, how often did you rely on networks and mentors for help? How do you plan to help other developing countries? Uh, okay, so let's maybe address these two questions first with our limited time. I can give the floor now to Sario first, followed by Mr. Yuan. Sario, the floor is yours. Can you give a very brief response, maybe one minute? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. And to answer your question, yes, indeed. Um, the 17 goals of the SDG says we shouldn't leave anyone behind. And young people are very integral in this fight because we form the largest block. So policymakers ought to make clear cut plans that seek to engage young people and their energetic force and the resilience to advancing their awareness on attitudinal change pertaining to climate action, life underwater, good health and well-being, even this COVID pandemic, um, the protocols that have been outlined, all these things, we can, young people need to be part of the, of the whole process. And you see, the, the, the amazing thing about this is that um, young, we need to give young people the opportunity to call to action their peers on national platforms and engage them in decision-making, meaningful participation on the SDGs and how it can be achieved collectively. We're in the era of social media now due to the pandemic. Social media is more ripe than ever. So we need to be able to do these things on social media as well. And in some countries where data, internet data is so expensive, we need governments to be able to subsidize data the cost of data for people to be able to afford and use social media for, for, for meaningful participation. For a, strong, with a strong ecosystem, this can be done. It can be the, the strong backbone for youth startups. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daryl. Um, now the floor is yours, uh, Mr. Yuan. Okay, thank you. Well, I started my own business when I was little and I was helped out by many good-hearted people. I'm grateful to all of them. Without their help, I wouldn't be able to make it today. Well, 
the theme of today's dialogue is youth entrepreneurship and innovation for SDGs. We are willing to help out to achieve SDGs. We are now working with uh, baking training institutes um, so as to, uh, on one side, offer their jobs and on the other side, uh, help them learn how to bake the technologies and techniques. And in the future, I'll continue to support the YES campaign so as to do contribute, uh, make my own contribution and do contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yan Xuanxian. Uh, now, let's, um, uh, we have actually learned so much from today. And I know that all the stories are very inspiring, but we don't have time today to have more dialogue, more time to exchange. I think this is a community of young people, young people with a strong sense of responsibility, because the earth is our home. And no matter how far physically we are apart, we share the same world. And we heard from you that we cannot work alone. We have to work together with partners, with mentors, with other young people, but also engaging with government, with society. I'm so happy today that we can create such a community with you, not just as speakers at the dialogue, but as partners in action. And together with you and many others, I think this generation of young people is a generation of cooperators. And only cooperation can make the world better. As you all said, youth is not only the future. Youth are today and now. We may not know all the steps, but as long as there is a common direction for a sustainable world, for development, and for a better future together, we can take our steps together. So once again, let me thank you, all the partners, speakers, and participants for this amazing opportunity. We welcome all young people to join our journey today to unleash your entrepreneur spirit and innovative ideas so that we can together build a better world. Well, let me propose that we take a group photo to end this dialogue and keep in touch with each other in the future. So let's act together as a community for, communi for cooperation and for a better world. Okay, ready for photo? Cheers. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, let's end the dialogue now and I thank you very much. And uh, it's a, a, another start of our deepening friendship. Bye. Yeah.